Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Diego, and for those of you who are new around here, I am, well, I'm an incoming medical student at the London University. Um, it feels kind of weird saying that, but it's been quite a journey uh, for those of you who've been following me on this channel. Anyway, today's video is uh, a video about how I got into medical school. So I thought it would be pretty useful to maybe run through my journey into medical school um, some of the steps that I have sort of uh, undertaken into successfully achieving or obtaining an offer for medical school and hopefully you'll find this useful and it also serve as a sort of guidance um, for you in your applications so without you know taking more of your time like I always say let's get straight into this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe support me support your boy and yeah let's get straight into it So I think what the best thing to do is to go step through step and there's going to be timestamps in this video um, for your efficiency sake. Um, obviously you don't want to be wasting too much time, um, but yeah, there's going to be timestamps. So first of all, I thought it would be important to address the undergraduate um, choice, the graduate part of my journey, um, and then also the admissions test and the work experience to finally then achieve in the um, uh, medical school offer. So first things first, so, so the journey begins at the undergraduate point. So with regards to my undergraduate degree, I began uh, with a degree at, uh, at the University of Westminster studying biomedical sciences. So I did that for one year. Um, so I studied biomedical sciences at the University of Westminster for first year. Um, I found it really good. It was, you know, I enjoyed myself. I've always had a sort of curiosity to science and Naturally, I found biomedical sciences to be quite a good fit in that sense because it was very relevant to my interests. At that point, I do want to stress, um, I wasn't thinking about a career in medicine or pursuing medicine in any capacity at all. So it was just a purely sort of practical sense in the fact that I liked science. So finishing first year, what happened was that I transferred to another university called the Royal Veterinary College uh, University of London, which is a small university um, sort of specialist uh, college in veterinary medicine, and they're sort of part of they're a part of the university of the University of London. So I went there. I did my second and third year of my undergraduate studies in biological sciences. Now this um, this sort of portion of my undergraduate studies was very interesting because it was. Um, a mixture of because obviously the university was uh, vet was specialist in, in in veterinary sciences. There's a sort of mixture between human biological sciences, but then also veterinary aspects. And so I really found it to be very interesting. Again, I I, I found it to be uh, very nurturing to my scientific curiosity. We had good opportunity to um, have lecturers from external universities. So in second year we had lecturers from UCL. And then also in third year, I was actually able to do a um, exchange for a semester at a partner university, in this case, which was King's College London. So I did that for second year and third year, biological science at the Royal Veterinary College. In my third year, I went to King's College and I did a semester in a module called Behavioral Science. At this point, uh, I, well, at this point I was doing my, this was in my first semester of my third year and I had colleagues on the, on the course who were medics and who were also interested in doing medicine and I think this was really where I started to uh, maybe be a bit more um, uh, sort of interested in medicine or sort of become vaguely interested in medicine because of the conversations I was having and also because I was based at the Geist campus which is literally across uh, the hospital and it's obviously a hub for medical students and so you know naturally if you're scientifically curious and you've got colleagues and friends who are in medicine you know you're going to have some sort of interest and so for me it began at that point um, right so that's so that's my undergraduate I, gr I graduated I obtained a 2-2 uh, which wasn't necessarily um, 
what I wanted. I really was pushing for a 2-1 in my third year, um, very, very much. Um, I did well in my third year, but it just wasn't enough to really push me up to a 2-1. Um, however, you know, this is sort of a, just a testament that even if you do get a 2-2, you're still able to then at some point um, achieve a uh, spot at a medical school and on a graduate entry course, which are very competitive in general. So there's no, there's always hope. So once I graduated, I, um, I then embarked on a two year uh, degree. So I started, continued studying. I went to Imperial College London and I did a master's in health policy. And it was a two year part-time course um, with the final portion of my sort of research dissertation taking about six months. Um, and I literally just recently had my graduation uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, due to the whole COVID situation. Anyway, so I did this course, uh, the two year part-time masters. Um, it was a very interesting course. I was able to look at how healthcare is financed, how health policy is made, um, some of the factors uh, related to uh, making policy in the UK and also internationally. Um, and so it was just a really interesting um, perspective for me. Um, at this point, I was very much now on the journey of trying to uh, apply for medical school. So that's that. So I graduated, I attained a merit with a distinction in my research. So it was definitely an improvement to what I had achieved in my undergraduate studies. And that's what I wanted. Um, so following on from that, uh, the other part of sort of the whole application is obviously the admissions test. So um, in the past, I've done the UCAT and I've done the GAMSAT. However, given that I'm talking specifically about the experience this time around, uh, that's been successful, I'm going to just mainly focus on the GAMSAT, which is what I uh, focused on for this time around. Because in the past, I've done the UCAT and the GAMSAT in the same application cycle, and I just found it quite hard to manage. I was also trying to manage full-time work, and so, yeah, it just got a bit hectic. But this time around, I sat the GAMSA in March of uh, 2021 and I registered for it in January, which I believe was literally on deadline day. So I spent about maybe a month and a half, two months um, preparing. I can't remember exactly, but it was around sort of that time frame. I'd already sat it twice before, so I already had notes, I had experience, which is why I was able to prepare for it in a shorter time period because typically it's you know, three to four months people take their time. Um, so I prepared and I sat the exam in March. In May, I got my results and my results were much better than before. Um, overall it was a score of 61 and that score of 61 was actually what I needed to then get offers, uh, to then get interviews for uh, a couple of universities, one of which was Nottingham and the other one which was St George's University of London. Um, right, so that's the GAMSAT part done. And so following on from the GAMSAT, um, obviously another part of your application is work experience. Now, given the whole COVID situation, um, it's important, but it's not necessarily been critical in some universities. I know there are some universities which are much more, um, uh, which are much more sort of uh, meticulous about those things and they'll have sort of hours that you need to have specifically allocated to work experience. Um, however, in, in my case, this wasn't the case, but I still have had work experience sort of that I could use for my application. So to name some, for example, in my third year, if you remember, I was talking about when I went to uh, King's. So when I went to King's, um, also there was a period where I had like a week off um, in terms of there were no lectures. And I still always had coursework that I was doing, but there were no lectures. And by then I sort of knew that I didn't really want to go into full-time sort of research lab-based roles. And I realized I'd done nothing that was sort of practical, that was hospital-based or that was, you know, science and healthcare, but, you know, practical. And so I decided to actually volunteer as a sort of medical volunteer abroad. Now in hindsight, there are definitely cheaper options to you know, to do this, you know, you could literally go to your local hospital, um, to your local nursing home and help out. However, at that time, I wasn't really connected with the whole medical school application. So I was very, very removed from the sort of normal places to go get experience. But anyway, I had this desire. I paid 
I can't remember exactly how much I paid, but it was a good amount. Um, I remember, yeah, it was probably, it was a good amount to pay for my flights. Um, but anyway, I went and I volunteered abroad and I went to Costa Rica for a week. And at this point, I was volunteering um, at a nursing home, an elderly nursing home in a region called, well, in San Jose, which is in, basically in, in the capital of Costa Rica. And so it was a good place for me. It was really uh, fun. It was also a good opportunity for me to start to see some of the challenges in healthcare abroad, what it's like being a nurse, what it's like being a doctor, what it's like just helping people who are in need with healthcare needs and all of these factors, you know, that the stress involved with uh, when people are in pain, uh, the things you have to take into consideration, communication. And for me, I just found it really interesting. And bit by bit, I found it to start to stimulate that desire to want to do something that was practical. Scientific, yes, but very practical, hands-on. So that was my first work experience. And then what I did was, once I went on to my uh, master's course, um, I managed to speak to a couple of my course tutors who were practicing doctors about um, obtaining work experience. And I'd spoken to them and explained and expressed my interest in wanting to be a doctor. And so they saw, they very kindly agreed to um, give me an opportunity to shadow basically. So I was able to shadow uh, the, a urology consultant, um, an ENT consultant and then also a geriatrician um, which was very good at Hospital London and I really really enjoy, enjoyed it. It was a, a really fascinating experience and um, I think it just contributed to that sort of desire to do medicine and also just getting to see how things work you know because obviously um, a lot of the times you know as an applicant you have perhaps perceptions which may be true which may be exaggerated which may be completely false and so actually going to you know these places and actually being able to uh, um, experience this you know it's very eye-opening and it also sort of allows you to inform the direction of where you where you want to really go do you really want to do medicine maybe something else and um, so for me I found it very useful and I was able to do that and then also I'd also had experience in volunteering at the local nursing home and so that sort of completes my work experience portfolio, I guess, in, in some sense of this application. And so just summing up, I guess, what's, so sort of to sum up my journey, you know, I had my undergraduate degree, biological sciences, completed 2-2, and then had my master's in health policy, where I achieved a merit and a distinction in research. I then had my work experience, um, you know, which was all of these sort of wide range of of work experiences and then also my admissions test which um, was a solid score this time around and so this all I guess is you know I wouldn't say there was one determining factor that dictated why I got into medical school um, so I don't want you to take you know a particular thing that you have to do it just like I did it because um, I think there's a, a couple of things that are very important depending on when you want to apply Mainly, I would say the most important thing from my experience, at least to even get to interview stage, is your admissions exam cutoff. Now, you've obviously got the UCAP and you have the GAMSAT. In this case, I applied for the GAMSAT because I was more familiar with the exam. I felt like I could improve on it more than the UCAP. And then also, um, just a selection of universities for me worked out better because, for example, Nottingham, St. George's, and then I believe also Ulster, uh, they accept students um, and also Swansea actually accept students with a 2-2 but with a master's and so that was perfect for me and that was what, what I was looking for. Um, so I guess this sort of concludes the story of how I got into medical school, you know obviously once I was interviewed, once I went to interview stage, um, um, you know there was a sort of the interview typical MMI for uh, St George's and then there was a panel uh, type interview for Nottingham and both very different but both very enjoyable uh, enjoyable and you know uh, well I started to prepare for interviews um, in November I'd only heard back actually four interview invitations uh, mid-December but I just didn't want to I so I was basically preparing a month before um, without really knowing if I was going to get an interview or not 
Um, but I just did that because I wanted to make sure that I'd covered as much as I could as possible. Obviously, I'm, you're not going to be an expert in interviewing, but you just want to do your best. And so that's what I was trying to do. And I had my interviews in uh, January or in February, actually, both uh, interviews. And yeah, thankfully, I received an offer to study uh, at the London Medical School, St. George's. And uh, this was actually in, well, I think it was March. Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago. And that concludes it. Once I got my offer, I, um, once I got my offer, sorry, I withdrew my application from Nottingham because I knew I wanted to go to London and I wanted to remain in London. So I think that concludes how I got into medical school. You know, these are some of the, the, the things that I've sort of thought about and I think it's probably, at least in my um, uh, perspective, from my perspective, I think it's probably the best way to sort of describe how I got into medical school. So breaking it down across all these stages of my sort of journey so far. But if there was anything that I sort of missed out, um, a particular area that you maybe want me to go into even more, you know, just let me know and drop a comment in the comment section below and I'm more than happy to make a video about it. Um, I also feel like I've got a good setup now, so I think it's just gonna make it easier to, to have these type of videos, make them conversational, you know, not very structured because I think, you know, that's sort of the, the, the you know, that's what it gets fun. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. You can follow me on my Instagram at Diego underscore NJSF. If I've got that wrong, I'm still gonna put it somewhere here. Uh, so you can, you know, click and you can follow me and see what I get up to. And yeah, thank you for the support. Um, as always, take care, like, comment, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye-bye.